In today's video, we are going to talk about Natasha's Law, what it means and what it stands for, and how you can prepare for it. So what is Natasha's Law? Natasha's Law was created, uh, Natasha was a teenager that bought a prepackaged food item which contained an allergen that she wasn't aware of. When she consumed that sandwich, she subsequently had a reaction to that, an allergic reaction, and then later passed away. This type of tragedy was definitely something that could be prevented. And since that tragic loss, the UK has implemented Natasha's law. And what that means is prepackaged foods that are sold for direct selling to consumers must contain an allergen and an ingredient list so that people that suffer from any kind of allergies can look at that package and avoid that food if necessary. So in today's video, we will talk about how you can comply with that rule, how why does it apply to you, and in what criteria uh, does it apply. So the goal, as I mentioned, of this rule is to display the allergen list for PPDS. Now, a food and beverage business, we want to avoid any more tragic loss. And so we are trying to be more transparent and display all of the ingredients and the allergens within that food so that the consumer can make an informed decision. That is the basic goal of this rule. So what types of foods need this identification? Natasha's law states that any food that is set for PPDS, now what does PPDS mean? PPDS is pre-packed foods for direct sale. So if you have a shop or a deli or a small sandwich shop, etc., and you pre-package foods that are packaged in your facility and are sold in your facility and your consumer just goes and grabs that sandwich or that food item and walks off after paying, that is considered PPDS, and those products should have an allergen identification. So what is the difference between just a regular packed food and a PPDS food? So a PPDS food is something that you would pack yourself within your facility that you prepared and you packed. A pre-packed food would be something that you perhaps purchase and sell in your shop. So, for example, if you purchase a Danish from another business that you then sell in your shop, that Danish, which is prepared and packed by another vendor, would already have an allergen identification and an ingredient list on that package. So you are not responsible for displaying that since it already has that information on the package. The consumer, when they're selecting that Danish, will just read that information on the package and make that choice if this is the right food for them or not. If you sell any type of custom-made products, for example, if, a, if your consumer comes up to you and says, I'd like to order this type of sandwich or this type of pizza, which is then custom-made for them and it is not prepackaged, that does not qualify for Natasha's Law because the law states that if a consumer is coming up to you to order a custom-made product, the likelihood of them informing you of their allergen status is high. So they will tell you what they're allergic to, and you as the uh, you know, sandwich shop or the you know, industry professional would avoid that ingredient for them as you make the final product that is, you know, is custom-made for them. So now that we understand which type of food qualifies for PPDS and uh, what type of information is needed for it, let's talk about how you need to be ready for this law. So the food industry has up until October 1st to get ready for this rule. What we suggest is help your team and your business get ready by making sure that you have the ingredient list and allergen list for all of the products that you buy from another vendor. So, for example, if you buy bread or a sandwich spread or any kind of sauce that you don't make in-house, but you do use that in your PPDS product, you need to have the ingredient list and allergen list from that supplier. So contact those suppliers, get those in your, house, in your business so that you can look at the ingredient list and allergens and determine what your final products list will look like. 
For example, if you create a sandwich where you purchase a bread uh, or a sandwich spread from another business, you then need to make sure that um, the bread and the sandwich spread along with all of your ingredients contain, uh, the, the allergen list is displayed for all of the ingredients. So a consumer walks in, they buy your sandwich, they know exactly what was in the bread, in this you know, sandwich spread that you bought from another vendor and any of the ingredients that you have added to that sandwich, which is pre-packaged. And then they can make that choice to say, okay, if this is something they can eat or not. So get ready by gathering all of that information having that in your team, teach them how to read that information, and then create a process so that you are ready for this rule. Now, how do you display that for your package? What the law states is the consumer needs to be able to identify on the ingredient list which items are the allergens. And you can either do that by bolding them, such as the example I'm showing you here. You can do any other type of color or any other, you know, capitalizing, etc. As long as you clarify that this is how the allergens are identified on your ingredient list so that the consumer can easily just pick it up and look at it and decide if this is for them or not. So my suggestion would be to uh, look at options that you have and figure out what process you want to implement, and then put all of your prepackaged products through that process so that you're ready when this law goes into effect October 1st, 2021. I hope this was helpful. Here are some additional resources that you can refer to. The first one is a really good website from the UK. Of course, this rule is about the UK. So um, they have made this type of decision tool where you can go in and put your criteria of the types of food you produce, and then it'll help you determine if you, if you need to do the PPDS Natasha's Law rule. The second link is uh, a, food and gov you know, a food standard agency website that is basically the governing body that is implementing this rule. The third website is our company, nutritionistpro.com, and if you have any questions, you feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to direct you in the right place. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.